Well, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, and welcome, welcome, welcome to Empowering Word Christian Center. I'm Pastor Alvin White, and welcome to Tuesday Prophetic Updates. Today is Tuesday, March 5th, 2024. Praise God, right? Hallelujah. Come on in. Come on in. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Empowering Word Christian Center. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. We want to welcome everybody that's watching around the world, all the nations, all the different countries, all the different ethnicities and nationalities. We welcome you. We praise God for you. We're praying for you. Welcome Kenya, Africa, our friends from Kenya, Bishop Wycliffe. Hallelujah. We love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you. And we welcome everybody that's watching around the states of these United States of America. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Praise God, we welcome you also. Hallelujah. So, glory be to God, glory be to God. We want to welcome our first time visitors. If you're here watching, viewing for the very first time, we welcome you. We know that you're not here by accident, but you're here on purpose. For God's purpose. Praise be to God. So sit back. Why don't you text somebody, inbox somebody, let somebody know that we are live right now. Let them know that we are live right now. You can tag their name in the comments. Praise God. You can do that. You can welcome them. You can invite them. Hallelujah. All right. Now, if you're new to Empowering Work Christian Center, you can go to our website. Perhaps you've already done so at www.empoweringword.net, again, that's www.empoweringword.net. Our contact information is 815-243-0724 or ewcc.office at empoweringword.net. Again, that's 815-243-0724 or ewcc.office at empoweringword.net. We praise God for you. Let us know how we can be a blessing to you. You can go to and follow us on Facebook. Perhaps you are already there. You can watch our YouTube, all our YouTube videos. Praise God. We want you to watch the YouTube videos. We are currently on a series called the Antichrist Agenda. Now, this Sunday was Family Sunday. We have a powerful message that will build your faith from the Family Sunday service. Now, this Sunday we're going back into the Antichrist agenda. I believe it'll be part 32. So exciting. So exciting. So awesome. So powerful. The Antichrist agenda series is amazing. It's the most important series that we've ever done. Couple that with Remnant Rising, Volumes 1 and Volume 2. Volume 2 is the prequel to, Remnant, uh, to the Antichrist agenda. It is the Acts of Philadelphia. I'm telling you, every message that we have done in these last few messages, I think we did a message called Coming Soon. I think we did a message called Rise of the Pharisees. Oh my gosh. This is, our church is very, very prophetic. It has a prophetic apostolic mantle on it. That's the calling on my wife and I's life. That's the calling on our life. Praise God. And so with that said, that's what we're called to do, and we accept that, and we thank God for that. So check it out. Also, man, did you check out the Tuesday Mentality with Pastor Robert Carr? Great stuff. Tuesday Mentality. Make sure you check that out every Tuesday. It's on Facebook. It's on YouTube. This is called Tuesday Prophetic Updates. This is where we break down news. According to a biblical prophetic standpoint, we go over prophetic words that I've given, perhaps my wife, people in the church. We have a school of the watchers, prophets, and seers. We teach people how to operate in the prophetic gifting. And so that's, that's again, the mandate that we have on our church, the anointing that we have on our church. Praise God. So Wednesday night, we have the disciple leadership meeting that's tomorrow night beginning at 6 30 in person it's not live stream so if you're interested interested in something like that let us know also thursday thursday is coming up with pastor latoya she's she has powerful stuff ladies moms wives sisters aunties nieces 
daughter. This is for you. Thursday, Thursday. Check it out. Facebook, YouTube. Friday. Friday, we have the word for the weekend with the singles. In fact, Prophetess Erica Tucker, I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that your event is this Friday. I believe you're going to the movies this Friday. Singles, check out Prophetess Erica Tucker. Make sure you check out uh, the event this coming Friday. Check that out. She gives you word for the weekend every Friday morning. We also have Friday morning prayer and prophetic service. We pray, we come together, the power of agreement, the power of unity, the prophetic, praise God. We're going to have a great time this Sunday. It's going to be a uh, Sunday, best dress Sunday. And so we're excited about that. Praise God. Bring somebody to the house of God. Get to the house of God this Sunday. Praise God. All right, let's jump in. Let's open up in prayer. Father, we thank you so much. We bless you for your anointing, which removes every burden and destroys every yoke. We thank you for insight and understanding. We thank you for opening our eyes to see and our ears to hear. We bless you and praise you for your word, the living word. You are the living word. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. As I say every Tuesday, I have a lot to cover with you. I have a lot to share. And I'm going to try to do my best to make sure that I'm doing it very succinctly and, 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 and logically and presenting it very well so that you can grasp it and retain it and understand it. And it's not a, a, a jumble mess. First, a couple of things. CPAC. CPAC is the Conservative Political Action Conference. The Conservative Political Action Conference. That's what CPAC is. And so this is for conservatives. This is for Republicans. This is for the GOP. This is for people that would call themselves conservatives, of which you would find a lot of American evangelicals included in this group. Let me push pause. If you'd like to give to Empowering Work Christian Center, we praise God for you. Thank you so much for your giving. You can go to our website, click on the Give tab, click on the um, little button that says Give with PayPal. You don't have to have a PayPal account. You can give and you can put in the amount, use your debit or credit card. We thank God for your giving, your faithfulness and donations and giving, tithe and offering as we advance the kingdom of God. Praise God. Thank you again. That's on our website at www.empoweringword.net. We praise God for you. All right. So jump back to CPAC, okay? CPAC, it's many times twice a year. I believe they have an August event and then they have a February event. And so in that, um, CPAC is a big convention. They talk about conservative uh, initiatives, conservative agendas. They talk about whatever their talking points are as a political and cultural party. That's what they talk about, their plans, uh, who's going to be their leaders, who's, who, are they, a, who are they getting behind, and you know, who, you know, who has their best interests at heart, what initiatives, what plans, you know, things of that nature. That's CPAC. And every year, every year, they have white supremacists at CPAC. And they really have to make sure that they're doing a very good job of uh, concealing these white supremacists, KKK, neo-Nazis. Uh, they have to do a very good job of concealing them, you know, and, 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 and because they don't want to be uh, viewed as a white supremacist group. But the foundation of the conservative Republican GOP party is white supremacists. And I'm going to be talking about this more. And I've talked about it. If you follow me enough, you've heard me talk about how there was a party switch between the Dixiecrats and the Republicans and how the Dixiecrats were the party of the KKK and how they were the party of white supremacists. They were the Southern states, the Confederate states. 
And so in the 50s and 60s, there was a party switch of which the Dixiecrats followed Strom Thurmond to the Republican Party. And they got behind Barry Goldwater, the Republican nominee. Whereas the Republicans, who were the Republicans from President Abraham Lincoln, they followed John F. Kennedy and became the current Democratic Party. And so there was a party switch. And so um, when you hear a lot of times, oh my gosh, the Democrat Party was the party of the Confederacy and KKK, you know, uh, it's just because people are ignorant or they think they're slick and they think that they can kind of pull a fast one on people that are not really educated and understanding that party slip, uh, party switch that happened in the 50s and 60s. It's very, very, very historic. And uh, the receipts are all there to prove that that's what happened. So the Republican Party is the old Dixiecrat Confederate Party. And that's the party that is based in white supremacy, okay? That's the party that is based in um, the old KKK, all right? So with that said, this is why they have white supremacists and neo-Nazis that come to these type of functions. And so in that, a couple years ago, they even had Nick Fuentes show up. Now, Nick Fuentes is white supremacy. He is um, anti-Semitic, and, and he's very open about it, very open about it. There is no questions about this. I mean, Kanye West hired Nick Fuentes to be his political party manager when Kanye West was talking about running for president of the United States. Kanye West and Nick Fuentes are great friends. That's why Kanye West sported the White Lives Matter shirt along with Candace Owens. So you got to keep that in mind. And so, and, and that's part of why you see some black conservatives really just trying to really lure more black and brown people over to the Republican Party because black and brown people have historically voted Democrat. And so I'm not here to say, oh, you know what? The Democratic Party is for black people. I'm not here to say that at all. I'm here to say that these, these are the facts. These are the facts that black people have historically voted Democrat. And so there is a huge agenda. Even this came out, this, uh, this, uh, this came out um, this week. There are AI pictures of black folks with Donald J. Trump. Yeah, AI pictures with Donald Trump in the hood with black folks at the at the uh, at, at the you know the family cookout, the family dinner. I mean, it, it really is amazing. It really is amazing. Now, um, I don't think. Um, either party is wonderful for black and brown people, but I, I can clearly see the white supremacy in the Republican conservative party. Okay. All right. Now with that said, let's go back to white supremacists at the, um, conservative political action, uh, conference. Let's check this out. And I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. Hopefully you can hear this. And I want you to see this as well. Praise God. Okay, let's see here. This is a report from NBC. And this right here is a clip of, uh, let's see here, um, Joy. Uh, the readout, Joy Reid, um, talking about this. Let me play this clip here for you. So we begin the readout tonight with the freak show. The weekend, this weekend was the annual Conservative Political Action Conference, CPAC. 
a showcase of just how extreme the once grand old party has become. How extreme, you ask? Well, as NBC News is reporting, Nazis mingled openly at CPAC, spreading anti-Semitic conspiracy theories and finding allies. Yes, you did hear me say Nazis. NBC News noted in previous years, conference organizers have ejected well-known Nazis and white supremacists, such as Nick Fuentes, from CPAC. But this year, racist conspiracy theorists didn't meet any perceptible resistance at the conference where Donald Trump has been the keynote speaker since 2017. CPAC has repeatedly denied it, calling NBC's reporting fake news and grossly manipulative, and even going so far as to smear the NBC News reporter who was there talking to those very Nazis that CPAC says weren't there, saying our reporter was carrying the water for Hamas in his reporting of the recent Middle East conflict. Really, guys? Well... So that's one report. Here's another. Here's another person. I don't so know who this person of the is. The Trump era and the post-Trump era, to the extent you can call it that, is that um, some of the extremists have slowly but surely come out of hiding, right? I mean, we saw this uh, in the early Trump years. Remember the whole David Duke scandal? Guys like David Duke and Richard Spencer were out there promoting Trump, endorsing Trump, backing him, really making arguments for him. And Trump had to play coy about it, and he went on TV, and he's like, I don't even know a David Duke. Who's David Duke? I've never heard of him before. And, um, you know, it became pretty clear that uh, there was more of a connection than people originally thought between, you know, the David Duke types and the white nationalists and the Christian nationalists and the Steve Bannon types. Like, there's this, this connection. All Did you hear that? There is a connection. So one of the things that we found in the Antichrist agenda is that one of the uh, drivers of America being the beast out of the earth, Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, one of the drivers, and we actually have, I believe we have 12 drivers, 10 or 12 drivers so far. One of the drivers is white supremacy. White supremacy is one of the foundations of America. White supremacy is one of the foundations of America. So when you talk about make America great again, it's all about making America get back to this, uh, this time where white men, particularly white men, were in power. They control the culture. They control the political landscape. When you talk about, um, you know, uh, and, and, and in fact, there is the generation of the World War II, they call it the greatest generation. Well, that's what they're actually talking about when they say make America great again. They're saying, hey, let's go back to the greatest generation. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. So white supremacy is the foundation of the conservative party, and it is the foundation of the Republican GOP and American Christian nationalism. Now, when you talk about conservative, remember it's in its name, conservative, meaning it does not want to progress. It wants to keep things the way they are. The conservative party wants to keep things the way they are, whereas a progressive, by definition, wants to move forward and expand more uh, 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 explore more progressive in progress. Okay. And so there you have it. So it's interesting that he says that American evangelical Christian nationalism is based on white supremacy. Okay. Let's hear a little bit more what he has to say. People around that right wing, uh, ecosystem and it's stronger than many would think. Right. So another great example, of this is, uh, Nick Fuentes loves Trump. The leading Republican candidate, Nick Fuentes, and his Groiper army, you know, the he's just flat out a, a Nazi, right? And they love Trump. They love him. Nick Fuentes is a Nazi. He he will tell you himself. He's anti-Semitic. He is um he is anti-black, except for the black people that are uh subscribed to his ideology which is very interesting. I talked about this in the Antichrist agenda. I talk about the 
house Negro versus the field Negro. The house Negro subscribed and repeated the uh, ideology and ideas of the slave master. And that would cause them to have a slave master spirit. Well, um, a lot of people that follow this ideolo ideology, basically they have the slave master spirit on them. And I mean, when I say a lot of people, I'm talking about black and brown people. They are subjected and they bow down to the slave master spirit. Okay. So um, many of you will see this headline and you'll go, well, duh. But for normie America, I don't think they realize that this connection is there and as strong as it is. So here we have an article, Nazis mingle openly at CPAC, the Conservative Political Action Conference, spreading anti-Semitic conspiracy theories and finding allies. The presence of these extremists has been a persistent issue at CPAC, and in previous years, conference organizers have ejected well-known Nazis and white supremacists, such as Nick Fuentes. So this is interesting because there actually is sort of a there, – there is a disagreement, and they do butt heads in the sense that certain types – at CPAC, want these guys in the shadows. So here's here's the thing about uh, white supremacist Nazis and anti-Semites and things of that nature. The Republican and conservatives, they know that's their base. Donald Trump knows this is his base. That's why when the Charlottesville incident happened, he had to say very fine people on both sides. You know, you remember the uh, Nazis, Jews will not replace us, and they had the tiki torches, and one woman died because one of the Nazis uh, rammed his car into the crowd. Yeah, so Donald Trump, he could not upset the Apple Court. He could not upset his base and come down hard. That's why during the debate, with President Joe Biden, he said, hey, call out these groups. And he said, who do you want me to call out? He said, call out the Proud Boys. Well, the Proud Boys is a white nationalist group. Now, remember, white supremacy and white nationalism doesn't necessarily mean white. A white person, and we see this throughout history, white abolitionists, white people who are actually following Jesus, white people who actually love God, white people who actually call out white supremacy, white people who actually uh, come against racism, white people who actually believe the word of God. White does not mean white supremacy. And so in this, um, you know, what we can see is, is we can see that there are other ethnicities part of the Proud Boys. And so they too are white nationalists not being white at all, which is very, very interesting. And it shows you it's a spiritual thing. It's a spirit. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, and spiritual hosts of wickedness. So in that, if you remember that debate, uh, Donald Trump says, who do you want me to call out? President Joe Biden says, call out the Proud Boys. And what does Donald Trump do? He cannot degrade the Proud Boys. He cannot call out the Proud Boys. He tells the Proud Boys, stand back and stand by. And it was the Proud Boys who helped lead the charge against the Capitol on January 6th. So what he was calling them and he was saying, hey, stand back and stand by. Why? Because he knows this is his base. He knows the KKK is his base. He knows white supremacy is his base. He knows the David Dukes are his base. He knows the Nick Fuentes are his base. In fact, he had lunch set up with Nick Fuentes and Kanye West and other white supremacists. And when the media found out, he had to say, oh, I didn't even know who Nick Fuentes was. He's lying, among many other lies. Um, he knew who Nick Fuentes was. And he, when the media got wind of it, he was like, oh, you're going to have lunch with a white supremacist? And he was like, oh, no, 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 I'm not going to have lunch with a white supremacist. This is why 
Donald Trump has been a huge a uh, uh, um, follower and um, uh, apologist to Adolf Hitler. He's even read Mein Kampf. People close to Donald Trump that have broken away said he would quote Hitler all the time. Well, you can't quote Hitler in public without quoting Hitler in private. Something like these immigrants are poisoning the blood of our country. That's exactly what Adolf Hitler said. Something like, hey, these are vermin. That's exactly what Adolf Hitler said about anybody that wasn't welcomed in Nazi Germany. Okay? So, Nazis were a part of CPAC. Okay? Now, last week I spent some time on King of the North, King of the South. And you have to understand that concept. If you do not, if you struggle with this idea that one political party is, is representation of God, representation of Jesus Christ, you have missed it and you will be deceived in these last days. You will most likely follow the Antichrist agenda. Neither political parties represent the kingdom of God. Neither political parties represent the word of God. Neither political parties represent God. Neither political parties represent Jesus Christ. Neither political parties is on the side of Jesus Christ. God does not wear a t-shirt with a donkey on it, and he doesn't wear a t-shirt with an elephant on it, which is very, very interesting because I have been noticing that several uh, democratic, uh, liberal, leftist, Media people are saying something is going on and this is a big deal. And this is, I, I've noticed that leftist media, let's call them that, you know, so that helps us easily identify them. Uh, maybe people from MSNBC or, or even some on CNN or whatever. But they are really, really calling out that this right-wing Christian nationalism is not Christianity at all. And I find it interesting that the Democratic Party is the party that represents a donkey. And I do remember... A false prophet was riding on a donkey. Yeah, yeah, you remember Balaam, right? And he struck the donkey multiple times, but the donkey could see an angel standing in front of him. And God opened the donkey's mouth. I just find that very interesting. I also find it interesting that the symbol for the Republican Party is the elephant. And according to Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, the beast out of the earth, which is America, has two horns like a lamb and speaks like a dragon. And I just find it interesting that the elephant actually has tusks Two of them, and tusks are the closest things to horns. Remember, America has two national animals, the bald eagle and the American bison, which has two horns. You can't make this stuff up. So, in that, the king of the north and the king of the south, you need to make sure that you understand that both do not represent the kingdom of God. The church is in the middle, 
and people will take sides. People will take the king of the south side. People will take the king of the north side. And when I say take their side, I'm saying, hey, we stand behind these people. These people are righteous. These people are God's people or whatever, what have you. You and I are kingdom citizens. And I don't have to stump for President Joe Biden. I don't have to stump for uh, anybody. I stump for Jesus. I parade the gospel of Jesus Christ around. And that's what born again believers are supposed to do. We're supposed to look like the book of Acts church. That's what we're supposed to look like. All right. King of the North, King of the South. I told you. Now, I want you to really think about something. I want you to think about something. And I just want you to think logically here for a moment. I want you to think log logically here for a moment. I want you to think about cause and effect. Cause and effect. For every action, there's a reaction. Okay? We can see that in the world, in the earth, scientifically. We can see that. This is a fact. Cause and effect. For every action, there's a reaction. Okay? I want you to think about something. Does the Bible say that the end times gets better and people get more moral and they get more righteous? Or does it say things get darker? Does it say that people are doing more sin? Which one? Right. It says that things get darker. People become more sinful. Right? Okay. Now. Now I want you to consider the Antichrist. So are you saying, and this is, this is what Christian nationalists want you to believe. This is what American evangelical uh, pastors and prophets want you to believe. This is what they want you to believe. That the world gets darker and out of this dark world of sin and godlessness, the Antichrist rises to lead in this godless, immoral, dark world. Does that make any type of sense at all? How many people from the church would be deceived? Right? Just think about it. Just think if all of America said, we don't want any type of morality. We don't want any type of boundaries and laws. We just total debauchery. And that spread throughout the entire world. Would the church Bible-believing people go along with that? No. 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 No, 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 no. Some would because you're always going to have people that backslide. I don't understand backsliding, but you're always going to have people that backslide. But, the overwhelming majority of the church, the people that believe in Jesus, that love God, they're not going to go along with that. So why would a person think that the Antichrist is coming up out of dark, immoral debauchery? Why would anybody, why would any logical thinking Christian say, yes, the Antichrist 
is going to have Satan written all over him. Devil uh, tags all over him. And he's going to be leading the world in sexual perversion. He's going to be leading the world in sin and debauchery. He's going to be leading the world in just great immorality. Why would you think like that? Why would you think like that? You know why you would think like that? Because you have been conditioned to think like that. Because somebody told you to think like that. In fact, that is America's gospel. I grew up thinking that way because I grew up in America's gospel. In fact, if you watch end time movies, end time movies, the Antichrist is always some type of atheistic, devil, devil, demon, loving, uh, perverse, dark, sinister guy. We were at this award show last night and there was a song uh, that was sang and, and then in the background, they had this... Um, this movie trailer. And guess what the movie trailer pre it presented? It presented this end time eschatological movie of end time events and this Antichrist. And the Antichrist looked all demon with 666 or something on his forehead. And he looked dark and his eyes looked dark. And, and, and I, I, just, I just shook my head and said, there's another movie trying to portray the Antichrist, the Antichrist as this immoral, dark figure. That would not cause the falling away of the church. It just wouldn't happen. It would not cause the falling away of the church. That's number one. Number two... For every action, there's a reaction. King of the North and King of the South. There's two sides to this world system. The devil has two hands playing people. And so what? You have to have seemingly dark and moral side. And then you have to have a seemingly moral, and righteous side. And that's where the apostate church comes in. That's where the apostate church merged with political morality and power. The, the Antichrist rises out of the apostate church. It comes out of the Christian church right, political, uh, Christian nationalism. It comes right out of that. And that is the falling away. Why? Because they did not stick with Jesus. Oh, they think they did. No, no, no. They merged the gospel with a political and cultural idea. Okay? So, in this, Ghana passed a bill. Ghana passes a bill. This is just this week. Making it illegal for people in Ghana, Ghana, Africa, to identify as LGBTQ. Now, right away, right away, people that um, are opposed to the LGBTQ movement. <laughs> Yay! We're getting morality. Yay! That's what it looks like. I told you this is going to be a worldwide thing. This is not subjective to America. America will lead the charge in the Antichrist agenda. 
America will lead the charge in the false prophet. America leads, which is interesting because Christian nationalists think that America is the hero in the story and America is actually the villain in the story. It really is crazy. Okay. All right. Now, I posted something that said, do not be conformed to this world. That's what the Bible says. What you are hearing, and I know American evangelical Christian nationalists, people I used to uh, do ministry with, people I was close with, they preach something totally different. Stand up to the culture, uh, things of that nature. That's Christian nationalism. Not even the Bible. Where does the Bible say stand up to the culture? I just just show me one time. Put it in the chat if you if you found a verse where it says stand up to the culture. I do see where it says do not love the world or the things of the world for the world is uh, 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 you know against God and so on and so forth and 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 it says do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewal of my mind so that I prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And I also see where it says that Jesus said, in the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer, he's overcome the world. I do see that. And I also see where it says, Jesus said that Satan is the God of this world or the ruler of this age. And so I do see that, but I don't see anything where it says stand up to the culture. So why do they preach and prophesy stand up to the culture? Because it's a different gospel. It's an absolutely different gospel. Okay. Now this different gospel is a us versus them. It's an us versus them. You know, in the real gospel of Jesus Christ, you have people that get born again and they are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And people that are not born again, we call them lost. We call them lost, right? And they are, um, they are also acknowledged as sinners. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But in this different gospel, they don't, they don't use that language. It's an us versus them. They are liberal leftists, democrats, communists, Marxists. That's what they are. Okay. Um, one of the things that you're going to see is I talked about it and I preached about it and I prophesied about it is great hypocrisy in these last days. In fact, Jesus said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Herod. This is Mark chapter eight, verse 15. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. One of the things that you see from the apostate church is this is okay because we're doing it, but this is not okay because the evil people are doing it. You're going to see great hypocrisy. And one of the things that we can see great hypocrisy right now, right now, right now in our court system is you have a Supreme Court judge and Clarence Thomas who refuses to recuse himself in Donald Trump cases and January 6th cases when his wife, Jeannie Thomas was leading the charge at January 6th. However, down in Georgia, you have Fannie Willis with, you have um, Nathan Wade, and their relationship is a conflict of interest, but Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas and Jeannie Thomas, their relationship is not an issue. You are going to see hypocrisy on a grander scale like never before seen. Now, many of you know that I prophesied that America will have another civil war. God showed this to me in 2020. And I continue to see it. And we can see it escalating and bored and, and brewing. And all the media pundits are saying right now that America is in a cold civil war like the Cold War, that America is in a cold civil war. Well, guess what? There is a production company, a movie production company 
I never heard of them before until now. They are called A24. And they're coming out releasing a movie called Civil War. And it is a movie about America having a second civil war. I need you to go to YouTube. I need you to watch all the trailers. I need you to watch the reactions of the trailers. It is by A24. It's called Civil War. Now hang on for a second. God gave me this vision in 2020. He spoke to me. He sat me down. And he said, this is about to play out. And I shared it. I prophesied that Biden would win the election. I prophesied that there would be controversy. And I prophesied that they would say, oh, it's rigged and it, and it was stolen. I prophesied all of that. And I prophesied that it would continue and continue and continue. And it would go on for months and months and months. And it would not end. I prophesied that they would take Donald Trump in custody. Donald Trump was arrested last year. Mug shot. And I prophesied that America would break out in the Civil War, Second Civil War. And these people have put it in a movie that's coming out in theaters in April. You need to check this out. Uh, Kurt Kirsten Dunst is in the movie. I think A24 is kind of a they kind of, they put out B movies, but I guess they put a lot of money in this one and they have big time actors in it. So, let me see if I can run this, this trailer. And you know how movie trailers are. There's more sound and action and things. Let's see if I can hear some stuff. States have the United States Army ramps up activity. The White House the uprising will be dealt with swiftly. Let me know if you want to try anything. I guess I'm aware there's like a pretty huge civil war going on all across America. We just try to stay out with what we see on the news. Seems like it's for the best. Citizens of America, the so-called Western forces of Texas and California. <laughs> have suffered a very great defeat at the hands of the United States military. Mr. President, do you regret the use of airstrikes against American citizens? We're <laughs> moving to D.C. today. You need to go down there. A few journalists on site in the Capitol. Every instinct in me says this is death. What if... Every time I survived the war zone, I thought I was sending a warning home. Don't do this. But here we are. There's some kind of misunderstanding here. What? Well, you're American, okay? Okay. What kind of American are you? You don't know? Civil War, Spring 2024. You can't make this stuff up. I prophesy it's the year of great chaos and confusion and they come out with a movie called Civil War having to do with America, states seceding from the country, having alliances between different states. Oh, <laughs> You can't make this stuff up. Goodness gracious. Let's see if anybody is reacting to it. 
Um, let's see. I'm just going to click on some stuff. I don't even know who these people are, so I'm taking a huge risk here. Let's see. What's up, everybody? And today we're checking out a trailer for a film, Civil War Official Trailer 2. I watched the first Civil War trailer, uh, not on camera. I watched it in my own time. It looked really, really good. Very interesting concept. It comes from, uh, what's that production company? Isn't it like A24 or something like that? Is that what it's called? Okay. The official trailer for Civil War, an A24 film, just dropped. And after seeing like the first five seconds of it, I was like, we definitely don't need to react to this. And the crazy part is, I don't even think a lot of people know what a Civil War is or how crazy and devastating it would actually be. Like literally nobody would be your friend. You'd go outside, talk to your neighbor, be like, hi, Bob. And then Bob's like, hey, you got any favorite boy? So. All right. Listen. You need to check this out. This is bizarre. This is actually crazy. Um, by the way, it's Super Tuesday, so a lot of states are having their primaries. And you can see that Donald Trump, according to the Su Supreme Court, cannot be left off the ballot. Everything is going according to play in. Uh, let's see here. A couple, I got a couple of videos for you, and I got to let you go here. Um, oh, my gosh. It, it's just... Everything is going according to plan. Everything. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> uh, listen to this. This is Shane Vaughn. You remember Shane Vaughn. Uh, you know, he is a Christian nationalist, false prophet. Listen to what he has to say. I got to turn it up. Let's try it again. An extreme is to send the way that God can correct an extreme. Here we go. God can correct an extreme is to send an extreme. So he says the only way the only way God can correct an extreme is to send an extreme. Listen further. Raised up Donald Trump. Because Satan had raised up Barack Hussein, gay, raised by transgenders, Obama. Obama brought such extremity to the nation that God had to reach down and raise up another extreme. And that's why I tell you that Barack is who created Donald Trump. Because anytime the devil makes a move... Yahweh, God, makes an even bigger move. Okay. Did you hear that? He's making my case. This is a, this is a scientific case. Cause and effect. For every action, there's a reaction. He's making my case, only he's, he's so wrong about God doing it. Barack Obama served Two terms, eight years, eight years, the Affordable Care Act, the, um, the, uh, the, the, um, allowing, um, gay marriage and any other liberal thing that, you know, um, uh, uh, uh was hated by Christian nationalists. Right? So, a Democrat getting in after Barack Obama was never going to happen. And Barack Obama was black too? Cause and effect. So, Donald Trump was the white lash. Yes. Yes. Because we need to take our country back. As white supremacists say it. Okay? So in this, make sure you understand. King of the North, King of the South. The King of the South will rise up. Liberalism. Leftists. Whatever you want to call it. And it has to be overcome with 
family values, law and order, morality. And that is where the Antichrist rises up at. Okay? So, let me see. Do I have time for another video here? Yeah, I think that's I think that's it. Um, so, love and share it. Send it out. Let somebody know. I praise God for you. Thank you so much for joining. And tag somebody in it. God bless you. Go watch that trailer by A24 Civil War. Check out some of the reactions. See what people are saying. A whole Civil War movie coming out in 2024? You can't make it up! God bless you. Have a great night. Bye-bye.